Welcome to the Vector Garden. In this video, we're going to take a look at the new gradients that were introduced in Adobe Illustrator 2026 just yesterday at max. Here I've got a gradient between two very different colors. And when that happens, then usually in the middle of the gradient, they get kind of grayish. Also, what can happen with your gradients, but doesn't happen here, is banding. So that usually happens when you have two colors that are not too different and the gradient goes across quite a long kind of area. So let's go into the gradient panel and let's take a look at what Illustrator has introduced. So here we've got the classic gradient and I'm going to leave that as a comparison. And now let's go into this and there is an option that can fix the color. So we've got the method, which is set to classic here, which is the way it used to be. And of course it continues to be, and you can select perceptual and you see immediately what's happening. It gets more natural looking. So the way we as humans would expect it or would probably mix it when we would mix colors. And then also let's check out the dither. So when you have banding happening, then the usual countermeasure to this is applying dither. And you had to go into Photoshop to do that. So now you can just apply it by checking this checkbox. Okay, I'm going to save this file and I'm going to save it once more as a different kind of file. So let's go to save as. And this second time I'm going to save it as a PDF without the Illustrator editing capabilities. So there will be no Illustrator file embedded. You see, we are not going to downsample it. I'm going to do that in order to be able to just open it in Illustrator. We going to take a look at what's going on. So let's save this. The typical warning is happening and then I'm going to close it. That has to happen. And then I'm going to open it. Here we've got that PDF because I want to show you what Illustrator is doing in file formats that are not native, such as PDF. So here it is. And we've got the classic one. So there are a lot of clipping masks inside of this. So I'm going to select it using the direct selection tool. And you see, this is just the gradient. So let's open the layers as well. And we've got clipping masks and clipping masks again. So here we've got a path inside of a clipping path. But this path has still a gradient applied because PDF can understand this kind of gradient. Let's select the next one. So this is like this here. Here we've got an image. So this has been converted to pixels. And let's take a look at this up here. So here we've got the resolution, which is set to 72 PPI, which is not a lot. For a gradient, it might work actually, but probably not. So let's zoom into this. You see, this had a stroke applied. And in here, we've got this kind of thing. So I'm going to move this slightly. And you see, it got rasterized and not just the fill, but the stroke as well. And that's where it gets problematic. Although the stroke has been put on top of that, and that one is sharp. But still, you see the pixels at the side of it. Let's zoom out a little and let's take a look at this one here. So again, this has been rasterized. This time at 300 PPI, we're going to take a look at why that happens in a moment. I'm going to zoom in and you see the stroke has not been touched in here. I'm going to move that slightly and you see it's just a fill that has been rasterized. Let's take a look at why this happens. And for that, I'm going to open the AI file again. Let's take a look at the appearance panel. And I'm going to select this here. And you see it's just a stroke and a fill. And the perceptual is probably realized by some kind of witchcraft. But let's take a look at the dither one. And here you see 
dither is kind of a hidden effect because we cannot see it in the effect menu. It's not there. It's a hidden effect that's just been applied when you apply dither to this. One remark, you should not apply dithering to strokes. That does not seem to work. And of course, when it's applied as an effect, which is raster based, then it's important for the rasterization. You see it's been rasterized with 300 PPI, but for this, it's important how to set up the document raster effect settings. You see in this file, they have been set up at 300 PPI. So that's why this dithering has been rasterized at 300 PPI and the other one, 72, seems to be like hard-coded and doesn't depend on this setting. I've got a video about document raster effect settings as well. I'm going to link it in the description. Before we're going to take a look at how this interacts with InDesign, one other heads up. Suppose after checking out gradients and applying the dithering, you decide to apply just a solid fill. So let's do that. I'm just going to change that to some solid color. And you see in the appearance panel that the dither effect stays here. It has all these other following effects. This fill will be rasterized when outputting it. That's something you have to keep in mind when using gradients and when using dithering. After you change your mind, check out the appearance panel what has happened to these effects. Now let's take a look at how this interacts with InDesign because a lot of Illustrator drawings end up in InDesign and you just save the AI file and you check the option PDF compatible and this causes a PDF being embedded in your AI file. So let's go into InDesign and just place this. So here's the AI file and we have looked at the PDF. Let's take a look at what's inside of here. And I'm going to place this. And now we need to go to the pre-flight and see what we got. It says no errors, but let's go to the pre-flight panel and let's set up a pre-flight profile for that. Because inside of a PDF, the default profile does not check for the resolution of the images inside of the PDF. So, so this here is not checked. Let's turn that on. I need to create a new profile for that. So let's call that test. And we're going to check image resolution, the minimum resolution of 250 PPI. We're going to check for that. And let's check this out. And you see, we've got two errors. Let's take a look at that. I'm going to turn on the info and you see we have 72 PPI. So this resolution of 72 PPI does not only end up in PDFs we are saving as PDF, but also inside of the PDF inside of your Illustrator document. So what can you do about that? Because that's the important part. Let's open the AI file again like this. And here we've got the perceptual. So what we can do is go here and add the rasterize effect to the fill, just to the fill at 300 PPI, of course. And let's have some anti-aliasing to that and also create a clipping mask. So let's go to OK and save that. And now let's go back to InDesign. So we need to reload that. So the only error we have left is transparency, which is not allowed here, which I have probably turned on in that preflight profile and didn't want it. So that's what we have to figure out. But the resolution has been fixed now. Let's hope that there will be an update to Illustrator pretty soon so that we can use these new and nice gradient options without having to worry because they are pretty awesome.